the road warrior mad mad max 2 in australia for the u.s it was the road warrior and what a fantastic film such great memories not just the opening narration that end narration yeah. of road warrior stays with you yeah sure. and yeah, the warrior, yeah. to this day and the warrior max that yeah. was a lot we ever saw of him he lives yeah. now only in my memories he lives now only in my memories that last line has been uh, uh, co-opted many times since. Oh, you uh, bet. How did you meet uh, George Miller, director of Mad Max? Uh, came out in 1979 because your first book essentially was the novelization, I think, of Mad Max. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what what happened was I was working as a radio producer. I'd um, I'd left print journalism and gone into current affairs. A guy called Murray Schwartz, who's a publisher in Australia, was always trying to get guests onto our program. Anyway, he called me one day and said, look, he said, I know a guy who is uh, in the midst of directing a movie in Australia. And I said, well, that's a ridiculous idea. He said, what do you mean? Though? There's no Australian movie industry, Jack. It didn't exist. He said, anyway, he's read this book by Pauline Cale. I lost it at the movies. And she says in the, uh, the preface to that, that the best screenwriters in Hollywood have been journalists because they're embedded in real life. And uh, so that's where a lot of the great movies came from. So he read this and he thought, well, I should go and meet some journalists. He was looking for somebody to work with. So Murray said, we can he come in and see you? So I said, oh, yeah, sure. So he came into the office. I'd just finished that day's show and he came in, he shorter than me, very dark, curly hair, Greek heritage, grew up in a place called Chinchilla in Queensland. I liked it. He's very, very charming. Little, a very, very lovely man. And he said, do you, want, do you want to see the movie? I said, oh, sure. He said, it's not finished. So we drove for miles, miles and miles and miles out into the suburbs to somebody's house. I still have no idea whose house this was. I, I wish I could remember. I'd asked George, and it, it, he's not sure either, but somebody had lent him a room in this house, and he had a steam back set up. A flatbed editing machine, I don't use them anymore, of course. I had cans of film everywhere, and we sat down and we watched this movie that he sort of shot that wasn't edited, but he was putting together. And uh, we watched it on a 17 inch black and white TV. And he's in my ear explaining all the missing scenes, you know, I couldn't hear any of the dialogue, it's in black and white. So it finishes, he says, So, what do you think? And I said, Interesting, very interesting. Now, that's when I in retrospect, I realised I was well suited to movies because that's what you always say. When somebody shows you something that is absolutely terrible, you always say, oh, interesting, very interesting. I love the music, anything to get off the, the real topic. So I said, oh, it's very interesting, George. He said, yeah, well, what do you think of that lead actor? I said, oh, he's good. He said, yeah, he's going to be a movie star. I said, really? He said, oh, yeah. I said, well, he's very handsome. He said, yeah, but beyond that, he can really act. I said, oh, yeah. What's his name? He said, oh, it's Mel Gibson. That's his name. I said, and he said, remember that? I said, oh, yeah, I will. Well, the movie, of course, was Mad Max 1. I wrote the novelization of it, which, according to George, had a lot of things in it that should have been in the movie, but weren't, because I just invented them. So he said to me, let's work together. Do you want to work together on a screenplay? I said, yeah, all right. So I would produce the radio program from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m., have a bite to eat, and then join George and worked on 9 or 10 at night on this screenplay. And the, the most dreadful, dreadful part of it was when I realized something very important. I turned to George and I said, you have no idea what we're doing, do you? He said, no. I said, this is very frightening, George. I thought you were leading me. He said, oh, no, no. He said, that's why I thought we should work together. I thought you might have some idea. I said, I, I have no idea what we're doing. None at all. Talk about the blind leading the blind. And we plowed on. Opportunity doesn't knock. That's rubbish. Opportunity does not make an appointment. You're standing in a room and something taps you on the shoulder and you either grab it or you don't. And that's opportunity. And I, for whatever reasons, took that opportunity. And I thought, this might lead somewhere. Well, the screenplay was Road Warrior. It became a bit of a cult, something or another. And it made a lot of money, which is all that Hollywood really cares about. And uh, 
It gave me a career. 